Uh, abstract brainwaves, game genie in the beanie We ain't on the same stage, leveled up uh, the... Other yellow hack guy here, back with another video And like I mentioned in my update video I'm bringing back Sympathy 4 Starting now So again, if you aren't of age, aren't, you know Wanting to hear about these certain topics Go ahead and click off the video, there's plenty of content on the channel I just want to make these videos, you know, and I'll start off saying some of you are like, Sympathy for, I didn't know you made videos like that. Yeah, I did back in the day, and uh, this isn't necessarily to be negative or attack. It's just to have an open discussion about my thoughts and views on these topics as they present themselves. I wanted to make one of these back in the day on, like, pro Jared, but I actually met Jared, right? And... It wasn't my business. What he was doing with his wife, his business, uh, the accused pedophilia and all that, they were just that, accusations. So it, it came to light that those accusations were false. Is he still open to public opinion in terms of being creepy and weird? And, you know, yeah, you could you could leave that out there. Uh, but this video isn't about Jared, but what does Jared have to do? Well, Game Grumps is why, you know, I even mention him. Poor Aaron, Aaron Hansen, he's picked acquaintances, friends, and they've all got him in the hot water he's in. So if you don't know who I'm talking about, Game Grumps, again, I did a video on Game Grumps maybe a year or two ago where I actually had the opportunity to, during a Q&A, call Aaron out on using the N-word. Yeah, so even Aaron himself is not blameless. and but, but none of us are, okay? All of us fall short of the glory. But here's what I'm talking about. Uh, Game Grump started out a Let's Play series, and I don't think they took it seriously way back in 2012. They've been around for quite some time, longer than uh, a lot of us expect them to. It started out with Aaron Hansen and John Jafari, John Arian Safari. Wow, crazy name, Arian. <laughs> anyway, uh, they just basically told fart and poop jokes to silly stuff, playing games like a lot of us did as kids, right? But these guys were in their 20s, you know, early 20s, mid 20s or whatever, doing this stuff and... Uh, it was basically you hanging out with the people you talk to on some of these forums to an extent, right? Aaron started his career with the Newgrounds and trying to be edgy and that begot him saying stuff like the N-word and just controversial stuff in some of his videos. Thing is, he later apologized for all of this. And while that doesn't necessarily give him a pass, I can understand why some of you you know, feel like you still don't want to associate with them or subscribe. I myself, I still check into their channel from time to time, but I'm no longer a subscriber. But I did like their content. I still enjoy their content from time to time. John eventually got the boot. Uh, and here's the thing. Let me rephrase that. He didn't get the boot as much as he chose to leave. So he probably would have got the boot anyway. But he chose to leave, and that's my opinion on him probably getting the boot. It's because he kind of wanted to do his own thing, and Aaron kind of had an idea of what he wanted the show to be, right? So I digress. Moving forward, he was replaced by Danny Avedon. Lee Dan Avedon. They have these weird names, right? We all have weird names. But uh, there was backlash there. It was like, oh, we don't really like Dan. We want John and John. We want him back, and... Maybe John will come back and Aunt Danny will just fill in for him temporarily. And then John's political views, his crazy nut job views came out and they pretty much couldn't go back to that. But after a while, you got comfortable with Dan. Why? Because unlike Aaron, who was in his 20-somethings, you had Dan, who was in his 30s, who had been around the block a couple times and had interesting stories to tell. So it was one thing to say, hey, I can watch somebody play video games over and over for so long before it's boring. You know, we all enjoy Aaron getting frustrated at games, but that only gets enjoyable for so long to where you're just like, just play something you enjoy. Meanwhile, you've got Dan in here who's telling these life stories, life lessons, you know, 
dealings with depression and drugs and dating and the TV shows he's watching and things he's overcome and feelings of inadequacy, which, you know, maybe not everything, but we can all relate to some of that to an extent. And we're like, oh, not only is this therapeutic, but Dan's an all around nice guy. Dan's keeping the show going far longer than it could have. And here we are seven years later, another controversy. In the midst of that, you had Pro Jared, who I mentioned, who had all his videos removed from not only Game Grumps, but probably other channels. Um, you've just had other, you know, YouTubers in the gaming culture just get affected with all kinds of power-hungry stories where they're messing around with younger fans, and you thought Dan would be above that because he's an older guy, seasoned veteran. He wouldn't be subjected to that. What's come to light that he has, okay? So what I'm going to do here is read the article, and then we're going to go over some tweets uh, and just forum comments from uh, one of these forums that I found where they're talking about their opinions and ideas. And, you know, some of these guys are young fans of Game Grumps and what they think will happen and may happen and what they don't want to happen. So before my camera dies a third time, here it is. Game Grumps, Game Grumps Dan Avidan accused of grooming and predatory behavior. What is grooming? It's what it sounds like. You're grooming somebody to be something, right? You, you, you groom your hair a certain way to be a certain style. That's kind of what the word means here. A recent accusation by an anonymous woman of sexual misconduct by Dan Avidan of Game Grumps and NSP fame hits a pattern described by others, okay? So first and foremost, before the lawyers come in, if they see this video, I'm not saying Dan is guilty of anything illegal. Dan is not guilty of anything illegal. The public opinion, though, which my take may not be popular, and I'll get to my takes too, is where things get sort of gray, okay? Where video games and celebrity meet, again, this article's from Game Rant. Uh, this show is, uh, there is often controversy. This is now the case with Dan Avidan, co-host of the YouTube show, YouTube show Game Grumps, the group also responsible for Soviet Jump Game. Never heard of that game, but, you know, they've got some games out, evidently. Daniel Avidan is also part of the band Ninja Sex Party. That's right, kids. Your parents may have co-signed you subscribing to Ninja Sex Party. The word sex is right there in the name. No judgment, though. His character name is Danny Sexbang. Okay? Again, no judgment. The controversy centers around a pattern that has allegedly been widely known to members of the L.A. cosplay community for many years. Not just recently, many years. Apparently, Avidan has a history of holding phone and text conversations and relationships with young female fans, having sexual encounters with them, and later withdrawing all contact. While this has been brought up in the past, only recently has one woman come forward with more evidence of this as it happened to her. Okay? The story, which has led to grooming allegations as opposed to more general sexual misconduct, is thus the woman in question contacted Avidan at 17. So, in, in a lot of areas in the U.S., you cannot have sexual relations with anybody who's under the age of 18. Some places it might be 16, but in California, it's probably 17, uh, or I'm sorry, it's probably 18 years old you have to be to, you know, uh, just even engage in the exchange of any kind of photos or anything risque like that, okay? So Dan is talking to this 17 year old girl, and at the time there was no kind of intimate conversation. They remained friends and connected, the article says, and after several years, their conversations became sexual. So it was kind of like a time thing where Dan was like, she's 18 now, I can't get in any kind of trouble. That's where he's being judged right now, okay? This led to an eventual meeting and sexual encounter, and a short time later, all contact from Dan ceased. Somebody actually has video evidence, not of the sex happening, but of the conversation, okay? There's been, for years now, conversation of accusations of him sexting, which is not the texting part, 
sexual texting, sleeping and ghosting younger fans, among other things. So this wouldn't be as weird if Dan was like 20-something and they're 17. Dan right now is 42 years old. Happy belated birthday, Dan. March 15th, I believe. He just had a birthday. <laughs> a lot of Pisces birthdays uh, that I, I'm being aware of. But anyway, uh, 42 years old. So he was 35 at the time talking to somebody 17. Somebody half his age. Now, you could argue, hey, he was probably... 17 and this person was in kindergarten how weird is that but you know once you're an adult you're an adult we don't really look at things like that anymore he's not like woody allen or anything like that but uh it just makes you wonder life often imitates arts uh and here it is he calls himself danny sexbang he's got the long hair you know like the 80s bands the group is ninja sex party i mean He's pretty much told you <laughs> what you're signing up for when you talk to him. You know, some of these guys get hungry with power. It's hard for them to actually meet people. So they're fans who are ready and willing. It's just, I don't know, man. Uh, what is ghosting? Ghosting is you talk to people and then after a while you just disappear. I don't think ghosting is ever cool, but I can understand some situations where it's appropriate. And that's when you're talking to somebody and... They're kind of overbearing or they're trying to get too into your life to where you feel like they might threaten to harm you. And most of the time, what you should do is tell them, hey, look, I'm not interested or, you know, something like that. Some people don't take subtle hints, you know, myself included. Hey, I'm not interested or that is, I'm just not feeling this and then go your own way. But sometimes you could tell somebody that. And they could take it to a physical level where they might harm you, to which ghosting, I think, is okay um, because you don't want to hurt their feelings and they go into a bit of rage. I know some women, you know, they, they fear what men might do to them. So, you know, that's a thing. This is Dan, on the other hand, ghosting these people who, you know, they might have been promised a relationship or maybe an album cover. Who knows what the conversations were. But we do know this. There was a video of him saying, you know, he was into this girl and posting or into her, like, to an extent that he liked her, right? He posted a picture of a hot tub, and I'm not posting the article because I don't want the language showing up in the video. Again, I'm here for the discussion, but I'm not going to get all into the juicy uh, details other than he had a picture of a hot tub saying how he wanted to be with the woman there, okay? But this is not the first time that he's done this, let alone sent that same picture. So while it might have been a joke, a lot of guys sometimes, they'll just send the same pictures to different girls, you know, because if it worked for one, it might work for the other. And in Dan's case, you know, uh, it was like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> um, you had a woman named Katie Schwartz. She wrote a play called Bad People in which a character was pretty much Dan, you know, uh, not only that, but she was Dan's like assistant for so many years. And then finally, with this news coming out, she admitted that the play was about Dan, where this character wanted threesomes and foursomes and just was just kind of, how can I put it? Just they, they, were, they, they weren't right for each other in the sense that this guy was manipulative, but maybe she was too. I don't know her, but I didn't watch the play either. But um, there you have it, right? She came out and said outright that he's a dangerous man and a predator. You know, and this is a common theme in the video game industry. So don't look up to anybody, myself included. I'm not saying that I'm guilty of anything. You know, people can accuse you of anything. So I'm not saying you, you go ahead and cancel Dan. I don't know him or these details. I actually thought when he said what he said at the show that I was at, I could forgive Aaron based off of Dan's wisdom. That doesn't mean that you throw away the whole person because of their mistakes. I think there's still some good in Dan, and he was able to showcase that. In these Game Grumps Let's Plays, they were pretty much him talking to Aaron as a therapist. You know, maybe he's he's got a myriad of problems on his own. We all have our own problems. But uh, this was not the move, Dan, because you've got these young fans who look up to you, and even if they're somewhat aware that they're having an adult 
conversation and possible relationship with you, it's never going to end well when you cross that boundary. You just got to get with people your own age or people who just don't know Game Grumps at all, you know, because no matter how it's spun, if you're ghosting these 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 women, you're going to look bad all the way around and you should have known better. That's That's pretty much the only thing I can judge them for is you should have known better. Yeah, these girls were underage and you could say uh, at some point it's no different, but I don't know. I, 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 it's not my place to judge him for that. I think stuff like that happens all the time. It's still not illegal what he did. It, creepy for sure. I'm with you on that. It's just under our laws, it's not illegal. So uh, he, he tactfully waited till this person was 18 to you know, hang out with them and he had sex with them at a show, not like at a hotel room. He didn't bother to say, hey, let's go to my house. It was at a show that you or I or you know anybody watching would have been at. So it, it comes off very skeevy. And I was just introducing him to people that I know the other day via the videos. Like, hey, look, you know, you may not watch me and my content because it could be boring, but hey, check out Game Grumps. I would not have a channel now if it wasn't for Game Grumps. I said, let me not attack Game Grumps because there are other people that work for Game Grumps, like Dan, who I might affect their career if I ask Aaron the age-old question, why do you think it was okay for you to say the N-word? And hear him have an awkward, unprepared response because I plan to ask him that ahead of time. But now, it's like, hey, you kind of have to look at these people you hold to be true as accountable people, you know? Especially with the whole John Tron thing. Uh, but again, his name is Danny Sexbang, and the group is Ninja Sex Party. So all the signs were there that this guy might be a little out there. Uh, but, you know, it's just a name, right? But, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction. So that said, I'm going to end it here. What do you think? Uh, are you still going to subscribe to Game Grumps? Do you think this was all made up? I mean, there were several women who've come out here, you know. It's no different than the Deshaun Watson stuff. He's guilty of something. Maybe just not what is said, but just to put yourself in that situation just looks awful. Um, there hasn't been a statement as of this video from, or this the recording of which, from Game Grumps or Aaron. I'm sure there will be something later. I don't know if they'll remove Dan. They might stick by him since the show has outlived its, you know, initial concept I think because by and large of him um, you had Ross O'Donovan who had his you know crazy situation going on that was related with pro Jared right so you know Aaron's wife has also been saying the n-word and some crazy stuff so all of them have been tainted at some some degree and uh, like her play she called it bad people are we all bad people I don't know does he deserve forgiveness? Does he deserve sympathy for? Personally, I don't have any sympathy for Aaron. I don't have any sympathy for Dan, who really this video is about. I don't have any sympathy for Game Grumps. Uh, a lot of this stuff could have been prevented. Uh, I know Aaron's probably got his lawyers involved, and maybe if they have to cut ties with Dan, they'll figure that out. But honestly, I see it just blowing over. That's the ugly truth. It'll just blow over. There'll be some some manufactured apology from dancing. You know, I wasn't aware and I, I see ghosting is wrong. I'm sorry to anybody I've hurt. And then they just move on. That's, that's really, if anything, if they talk about it at all. You know, I sent my video out to the Game Grumps channel. I posted it on their subreddit. It didn't gain any traction really, but I had to say my piece. And likewise, I'm doing that here. But uh, no sympathy and That'll be got this next video. We've got another guy out here telling people how they should live their lives when it comes to dating. And he was just caught cheating. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. If you don't, stay tuned to the next video. Hope to see you there. If I don't, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Other yellow hat guy out. Captain Sensation!